I am writing this review as a hobbyist rather than professional photographer, that is, that sells photographs for a living. My first 5D was the Mark II, and I've used the Mark III for over 3 years myself, and instead of going through all the nitty-gritty of the Mark IV which you find elsewhere, I'm going to speak to mostly to the differences I've found in my day-to-day -day experiences and whether it's worth the upgrade for the hobbyist. First off, coming from the Mark III, the fourth on the outside is very much similar and you could mistake them at a glance. The differences include a slightly rougher cap on top of the new Mark IV body, where the Canon brand label sits, whereas the Mark III had the same material extended from the body over the cap. Perhaps it's a new material housing to play more nicely with the GPS slash Wi-Fi. There's also new switch to toggle face detection in live view mode in the back. The mode switch dial is also the newer Canon styles that bumps up a bit rather than the more flatter design of the Mark III. Otherwise, for those coming from the Mark III, you can feel right at home picking up the Mark IV for the first time. In terms of shooting, I personally find the viewfinder to be brighter on the Mark IV than on the Mark III. This could just be my units and maybe a bit of dust on the Mark III. But using the same lenses, I find the Mark IV viewfinder a joy to use, much like the Mark III's, and even a shade brighter. The new dual pixel AF works as advertised, and is much faster than the Mark III at face detection and toggling between different subjects, a big improvement here. The back review LCD is also a touch screen now, which allows for your standard panning of shots as well as pinch and zoom. Although many shooters will still opt for the familiar mechanical buttons, as a hobbyist that shares the camera for others to shoot as well as reviews them on the spot with many moms with Android slash iPhones, it's so much easier now to have them use the touchscreen to flip from photo to photo, and to zoom in and out to see themselves and whether the shot is worth keeping. In terms of photo quality, the highlight is the improved dynamic range of the new 30MP sensor. Although improved from the Mark II to the Mark III, I see a marked improvement for the Mark IV, pushing exposure on underexposed shots with the same ISO produces less banding on the same shots with the Mark III. Although Canon is still behind Nikon in this area, I'm happy to see improvements in this area. Autofocus at lower light levels at the center point is also improved. So that helps with getting those low light shots as well as for overall crispness and quality of the shots, which of course, depends very much on the lens itself. I found photos were very similar on the Mark IV, which is not in any way a letdown given I thought the Mark III was overall excellent in terms of stills quality. Also as a hobbyist with a simple Lightroom workflow, I still have Lightroom 5 with Adobe's latest camera RAW 9. 7. Adobe now supports the Mark IV, but you'll need the newest Lightroom 6 or Lightroom CC, which is another cost to add to your upgrade tally if you don't already have those versions and plan to use Lightroom. Also, although Adobe will enable editing of the new dual pixel RAW format in Lightroom, it looks like, at least for now, as of late September 2016. It doesn't support any making micro adjustments in focus that can be done in DPP. I find that it's useful when shooting with fast primes like the Canon 50F-1 liters where small adjustments can help you hit focus. Overall, another superb iteration of the Canon 5D line that hits many of the upgrade checkboxes most particular in the area of dynamic range. I'll update my review as I've gotten more behind the lens time with the Mark IV, and in particular, video shooting. So, is the upgrade worth it for Mark III owners? I would say for those of you shooting in more low light settings, the upgrades could make the additional cost worth it for you. However, for many others, given that photo quality improvement from the Mark III is not revolutionary, I would say it may not be at the current MSRP for Mark III owners, maybe wait for the next Black Friday sale to bring the price down a bit. Also, having used the Mark II as well myself, for those Mark II owners itching for the next big thing, with two generations of technology under its belt, 
the Mark IV is a worthy upgrade that you don't have to worry looking back on. After using my 5D Mark III for over 5 years with stellar results whether it be for weddings, families, infants, or travel photography, I decided that I was ready for the next upgrade. Since I am retired, and take several extended trips each year, my primary motivation to upgrade was the inclusion of GPS tracking. I would get home from a trip with thousands of images, then as I started to edit and tag them I would wonder, were we in Unfleur, or Lyrens, or Paris that day? Of course, I could figure it out from the Axif date tags, but being able to see exactly where I was standing is fantastic. I gave the camera a real workout on a three-week Panama Canal cruise in which we visited eight countries and had many excursions. Just the trail of GPS tags on my Lightroom map as we crossed the Panama Canal showing our progress throughout the long day in which I took greater than 600 images makes it all worthwhile for me. The GPS mode does eat up battery life quickly, and I might need two batteries for a day's worth of shooting, whereas with it turned off. I could get by with just one battery. To me, that is a small price to pay. However, when I'm not traveling, for instance for local portrait photography, I leave it turned off. Other significant improvements include the high ISO performance. I frequently shoot in AV mode, and rarely give a thought to hide the ISO is going on the Mark IV. Even at very high ISOs I know I'm going to get a usable image. The touch-sensitive screen is a great enhancement. Using the quick menu I can change settings on the fly and not even worry about missing a shot. Be aware that while you have the touch screen turned on, it is really easy to bump a control and end up with an unwanted setting. Somehow I accidentally changed the quality from raw to large JPG and ended up with days worth of images for which I had no raw. I'm sure that won't happen again. There are many other enhancements, both small and large. But what I like about this upgrade is that it is already a very familiar camera to me. Virtually all of the controls are in the same position, and the camera body is nearly identical. In fact, if I have the two cameras sitting on a shelf in front of me, I actually have to pick it up and turn it around to read the front label to be sure I have the right one. I bought this camera knowing that this might be the last few DSLR cameras that Canon will ever make. DSLRs have some advantages over mirrorless. The sensor is protected by the mirror from dust and contact with whatever is outside when you remove or change lenses. With DSLRs, you can see through the lens without turning on the power. True, DSLRs are bulkier and heavier than the newest Canon mirrorless, but some pros prefer the beefier construction. I love the picture quality and the professional level quality F lenses that are available in every shop warehouse, auction place, and even thrift stores. One of the reasons why I chose Canon was because their flange distance was shorter than Nikon's, and Canon wasn't stringing us along like what Nikon was doing before full-frame sensors became commonplace. I did not like cropped sensors. Canon made available a camera with a full-size 24 by 36 sensor and if I remember correctly it was my EOS 5D Mark II. But getting back to the 5D Mark IV, it's a professional level camera. The only thing I do not like is the LCD monitor. I wish they had used the fold-out and flippable monitor that the 6D Mark II has. The monitor on the 5D Mark IV is exposed. It does not angle up or down. It stays put. I can live with that, but I wish I did not have to. So what I did was put a glass screen protector on it. Done. This camera is a joy to work with. Ergonomics is perfect and I have small hands. Large-handed people do not complain with this camera. You can shoot with just your right hand if the lens on it is light enough. So I think I've told you the reasons why I chose this camera. It might be the last few of its kind and then the Canon mirrorless cameras will take over. Awesome camera. I've wanted a full-frame Canon digital for some. I've had, and still got, Canon film cameras, including an EOS 3 which I got last year. So I have quite a few F lenses. In fact it was the EOS 3 which decided me getting the 5 When it came I charged the battery and had a play. I put my f 50 mm f1.4 on it and pointed it at a lot of things and took pictures of them. 
One of the things I took a picture of was a bright star, in a black sky, with nothing else visible. The camera focused on it straight away so I pressed the shutter. Fantastic. However, over the coming days it Older. became than some countries. It also explained why my EOS lens all my others were not really up to the accuracy I wanted. Truly want. amazing piece of kit, and particularly good for great autofocus, great exposure control. The camera arrived early and properly packed, so no problem. It has made changing settings so much easier. Now I have so far it's performed well and I hope to live long enough to really this body was approximately $900 less than the price. The Amazon item included the international version. Click of the, the link in description below for more details.